بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد Another thing we need to be concerned about during this holy month of Ramadan because in fact this can either gain us benefit during Ramadan or it could be a means for our destruction or breaking our fast which is a part of our destruction Nobody wants sins for Ramadan you, want, you don't want to be the one who fasted and came about and didn't gain anything except losing weight The only thing you got is losing weight and had a dry mouth and some difficulty because of the sinfulness and because you didn't leave the muharramat and you didn't engage in those things uh, you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you to do may Allah protect us from being those people and one of the things which we're all aware of and I've mentioned it on countless sittings is about having good manners good akhlaq mashallah tabarakallah look at this beautiful these natural structures. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation here. But having good manners is imperative. It's an attribute of Ahl Sunnah. Because Ahl Sunnah are those who adhere to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was the best of examples. Alayhi salatu wa salam. He illustrated for us what proper manners are. What adab, what akhlaq is. He was a living example of the Qur'an. If you want to know about the Qur'an and you want to see the Qur'an be in practice, it was through the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam. And so, with that, we have to work on our manners, improve ourselves, become better, and exercise those things. Strive your best. We're hungry, we're fasting, and sometimes you get irritable, but strive your your utmost. In Nisa, remind yourself, and if someone makes you angry, say that. That's a dua, that's what the Prophet ﷺ said. In Nisa, in Nisa, the Prophet ﷺ said that. He said that that's what you should say if someone is is upsetting you. And so, the believers constantly work upon their manners to be better. And this is the time to do it during this holy month, this holy and blessed month of Ramadan. And one of the important hadith that we should keep in mind in regards to this is the hadith where the Prophet wasallam told us the importance of having Good manners, alayhi salatu wasalam. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Salawatu Rabbi wasalamu alayhi, he said, Ma min shayin athkulu fi meizana mu'min yom al qiyama min husnu khulk, wa inna laha yubghidu al fahish al badi. He said, Salawatu Rabbi wasalamu alayhi, there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of, a, of the believers greater than good manners. Or heavier than good manners. And verily, Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. So strive your best during this holy month to watch your tongue. Su'ila Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an akthiri ma yurkhul an nas al jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, What is the thing that enters the people into paradise the most? Qala thimmu faraj. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, taqullah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Fearing Allah and having good manners. And then he was asked about the thing that will enter the people into the hell fire the most. And the Prophet ﷺ responded by saying, Al Thim wa Faraj. The Prophet ﷺ said, The mouth and the private parts. Because those two things, when you think about all of our shahwa, all of our shahwa, it comes from those parts. 
that all of your desires, for example, eating and drinking, the holy month of Ramadan, our shahwa, there that we're restraining, we're restraining the fact that we want to eat and drink. We want to partake in in food and drink. So we're restraining those desires. And the other aspect of shahwa, which we need to restrain, especially during the holy month of Ramadan, but at all times it should be in a halal fashion. But during the holy month of Ramadan, it's completely prohibited to have relations even with your married, uh, even with your spouse. If you're married. So the ma husband cannot have relations with his wife until it's time to break their fast and vice versa and so how many sins come from following these desires by the private parts the private parts come coming from that or related to the desires related to that you have masturbation you have um, fornication you have uh, adultery, all of these kind of things which come from the shahwa related to the private parts. So if a person can safeguard their tongue and their private parts, then they will be, the Prophet ﷺ guaranteed them Jannah, that they will go to paradise by safeguarding your private parts and your mouth. So by your mouth, by not cursing people, not speaking ill of people, not backbiting and slandering people, not lying, and all those other kind of sins that you can gain by your tongue. And as far as the private parts we've already mentioned, refraining. Refraining from those things that are going to encourage you to do the Muharram. So if it is looking at, for example, pornography, looking at uh, the opposite sex while you're out, out and about, or on television, or what have you. Avoid it at all cost, all the time. Especially during Ramadan. Especially during Ramadan. You're fasting. You want Allah to increase your taqwa, to give you that momentum to keep going. So you have to be obedient to Allah and follow that hadith by striving to have the best manners and having taqwa and by avoiding the muharramat and those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has disproved of and we ask Allah the Almighty to grant us good and forgive us evil forgive us of our evil and bless us to die in a state of Islam as Muslimin as mu'minin. And may Allah increase us in Iman, wa Ihsan, wa Islam. And may Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala grant us good in this life as well as the hereafter. Wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.